Okay, the first thing we're going to test here is we're going to put a put this aluminum and a copper rod in there and use the Nestle's Pure Life water. And we're going to use the water as the electrolyte and the, uh, the aluminum as the uh, anode and the copper as the cathode. So let's see what it reads and see what kind of voltage we can get just out of these two dissimilar metals in, in the water. Just about uh, 0.458 volts, so not quite a half a volt. Okay, let's switch the uh, from the copper rod to a steel rod in the same solution, same, everything same. Looks like uh, 165 millivolts there. Alright, let's change that one for a stainless steel. Okay, we're going to stop it at that, uh, right about there. So you see between stainless as the uh, cathode and aluminum as the anode. Now we're going to put a piece of zinc in there. And I'm going to switch this back to the copper rod. Or zinc and copper. Zinc and copper. So you see that the, co the zinc is a better anode than the than the aluminum stick was, and uh, it, coming in at uh, 0.834 volts. And that's why zinc is used most commonly for as an as an anode. Anytime you get dissimilar metals in there. So let's go ahead and try a different water. Now this was Nestle's Pure Water Life. Let's go ahead and see if we uh, we put this in some uh, just some water from the county. So let's check that out. Okay, let's take this out of the uh, bottled water. Set that aside, and then this is just from the city water. Let's see what that does. Gonna drop the zinc down and the copper rod. About 0.856. So between the Nestle's Pure Life water and this, there isn't a lot of difference. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna switch our uh, our piece of zinc and our copper wire. Are just some more metals to here's the uh, some water here right out of the Atlantic Ocean so this is salt water from the Atlantic Ocean and let's see what kind of reading we get with dissimilar metals in that surprising I didn't I would expect it been a lot different let's try it uh, if we use a piece of uh, steel and zinc. In the Atlantic Ocean water. So that's seven or point seven four, almost three fourths of a volt. Let's try stainless steel. Okay, let's try a piece of aluminum. That'd be this kind of represents your outboard. So let's see what it does. So we're back to millivolts. Zinc and copper and salt water, eight and a quarter volts. Using the zinc as the anode, 
copper as the cathode and the ocean water as electrolyte, we can uh, produce uh, 0.831 volts. So the zinc would protect the copper by the, diff the potential difference in dissimilar metals. If you didn't run the zinc, and let's try putting the aluminum in for the uh, anode. So 0.5. And just to show you that it has an actual voltage here, I'm going to reverse the leads here, and we should get a negative reading. And we do. So we are actually re we are actually reading the voltage uh, in dissimilar metals here. So in the common in the marine industry, it starts out as zinc being the number one metal used for as a anode. Next would be uh, an aluminum, magnesium, and it's all by voltage. Everything is on a voltage potential that uh, of dissimilar metals on which one becomes the cathode, which one becomes the anode. But that's basically how the zinc works on your boat. Just out of curiosity, let's hook this piece of brass on here and uh, with the aluminum in and see what it does. The aluminum is still going to be the anode. Let me reverse those wires so you know which one's which. Let's see what the stainless and the aluminum does again. That's, uh, you know, everybody tells you don't do that. But stainless, or er, stainless steel and aluminum together. Well, we can see why. Just between the stainless and the aluminum, there's a voltage potential of 0.405 volts. Is if you look it up in the standard reduction potential, and that is basically um, every material that's mined from the earth has electrical potential, whether we're talking steel or anything. That's why steel rust, um, zinc oxidizes and when electrons start, uh, it's the standard reduction potential of the electrons trying to equalize. And each metal has a certain value of that. And when you put dissimilar metals together, they try to uh, go back to a neutral state which would be deteriorate and go back into the earth, whether we're talking about ore, uh, zinc, aluminum, anything. So, and that's what happens. And all it takes is a little bit of moisture and the dissimilar metals, the current can flow. So you can see, it doesn't matter if you're out in the Atlantic Ocean, if you're up there in the city water, or you have, you're out there in the Nestle's Pure Life drinking water, you still need your anodes and your best protection for your outboard is to keep it painted and keep your anodes in good working order. So to make sure your zincs are good. But paint is your number one and the zinc would be number two because if you don't change your zincs often and once the zinc is used up it goes to the next dissimilar metal which will be your aluminum and you've seen countless videos on people that haven't changed it and you've seen what it done to it. So. This is why it works. It's a dissimilar metals with electric uh, electro potential of electrons trying transferring is why you need your zinc and keep your uh, stuff in the water painted.